Hi all and welcome to the Truth About Apostates Scientology story. We're going to go over chapter 7 now. Um, this is where it gets kind of jaw-dropping in a, in a sense. Okay? Chapter 7, playing the legal system. So what do I mean by playing the legal system? I mean the actuality of apostates playing the system. The actions and intentions of using the judge and the jury to decide on whether or not the false information laid out is actually factual and using it exactly like that. Basically manipulating the outcome to fan the flames of controversy for the purpose of profit. Filing fake lawsuits to report on them before they get dismissed by the judge for being completely unfounded. Meaning... It doesn't matter if they win the court case. I mean, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter if the court case is real or not. That's what I'm trying to say. Doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if it's um, going to be dismissed or um, or if the information is there in there is real. It just matters to them if they just get publicity from it. That's it. That's all it is. So let me share a simple example. A man named Mike Rinder stated in federal court with regards to Scientology in 1994. This is what he stated. I know David Miscavige personally. As such, I know him to be completely honest and sincerely dedicated to helping people. End of quote. So that above statement was made under penalty of perjury in the United States of America. Perjury means if you lie, in the, if you lie to the court, you will go to prison, basically. If that's true, and it was stated as truth in federal court, why is Mike Rinder permitted to share the opposite on national television, social media, and with other publications? Well, he does it all the time, and he pays his rent by continuing the effort. So, if you're really thinking, let me go ahead and adjust this camera. I know it's kind of interesting. So there it is. So, if we look at that for a second, we see that it is very, very illegal what Mike Rinder's doing. Okay, we see what's illegal, what apostates are doing in general, right? We just know it's illegal, basically because they're countering their written statements, their affidavit, okay, in the court of law, which is really interesting, right? Here's another thing. Another statement made by Rinder in 1994 to the court was, I know from my observation that he works, he, David Miscavige, works 16 hours a day, seven days a week, without respite for any, for, no, for only one reason, his sincere dedication to bettering the lives of others. Let me go ahead and repeat that because I messed up in the middle. I know from my own observation that he, David Miscavige, works 16 hours a day, seven days a week, without respite for only one reason. His sincere dedication to bettering the lives of others. He and his wife live in a single motel style room. He eats with the rest of the staff in the communal dining room. He drives his own car and carries his own bags. He regularly partakes in general group activities. It would shock most people that anyone would work so hard for so little material reward. It certainly gave pause to ABC News when they saw it with their own eyes. End of quote. So, take it as it is. That's made under penalty of perjury in the United States of America. There it is. It's truth. He always counters it now. He's, he's countering it. So does the apostates. They just always like to do that. That's what they get paid to do, right? Why is Mike and his posse lying to others at how Mr. Miscavige lives in a mansion, that the donations are going towards him and his lifestyle? And why is it that these statements contradict the truth on what he observed with his own two eyes? Especially, also on top of that, ABC. Apparently, ABC News saw it with their own eyes, and they were shocked. So how do you contradict that? Like, logically, how do you do that? David Miscavige isn't seen driving fancy cars. He isn't. Living in a mansion. He isn't living in a mansion. He isn't. Eating five-course meals and partying with celebrities and billionaires. 
That just isn't what David Miscavige does and will ever do. Being the leader of the Scientology religion is not an easy job, and especially due to the fact that there are many attacks, both verbal and physical, from those hearing the nonsensical claims from the posse that Mike is running. Okay, when a when a um, and an individual gets wrong information, it tends to um, bring about a response, either emotionally, physically, or so on, so on, because they're confused and they're shocked that something so what is it incredible could happen that way, right? Um, it's not true. That's why that individual wants to physically and and um, and verbally attack the church because or any religion at that only because they're hearing lies as if it were truth if i heard a lie and i was convinced that it was the truth i'd go insane i'd want to I, I would want to hit somebody that's just not cool that's what false information does the truth is calm it is it is it is recognized and it's understood that's how it is so here it is here's a um, excerpt from a court transcript here it is over the last 13 years I have seen a parade of personal attacks level that day at mr. Miscavige which is also David Miscavige right which would have caused a less determined and less capable individual to give up and relinquish the position of lightning rod, quote unquote, for anyone seeking to disrupt or destroy the church. The first years saw attacks by government agencies, since proven totally false and unfounded, and documented by the government's own files gained through the Freedom of Information Act. Okay, that's interesting. Right, so you relinquish, you relinquish the position of lightning rod for anyone seeking to disrupt or destroy the church. Kind of interesting, huh? So, if it weren't Mr. Miscavige and it were some less competent person, it would have caused that person to just give up and say, okay, it's not my fight. It's not what I want to do. This is not what I want to do all the time. He didn't. He's taking all of the attacks right now, and he's still continuing on expanding the Scientology religion. The attacks don't really do much. They just show how insane the other group is, right? The person who's attacking the good group is just showing how bad they are. Interesting, huh? It's projection. That's what it is. Let me continue with the quote. These attacks went on for more than a decade. Government agencies amassed huge volumes of files on him personally, which is David Miscavige, and were aided by civil litigants who also jumped on the bandwagon and targeted Mr. Miscavige with their spite and malevolence. And in the face of this, when it would have been so easy to give up and walk away, never to be vilified or attacked again, I have seen him persist because what he was doing in Scientology is important and invaluable to all those who are helped by L. Ron Hubbard's technology. That determination was addressed by the fact that none of the accusations made about him were true. Huh. I'm sorry. What? By the fact that none of the accusations made about him were true. Interesting, huh? Alrighty, so that's by Mike Rinder under penalty of perjury. There it is. So based on the above statement made by Rinder, you can see that he saw through his very eyes there were 13 years of attacks being thrown at the leader of Scientology. This is not to be argued, and it is not to go unnoticed. He stated it, and he did it under oath. Scientology's leader has seen attacks by government agencies as well as other entities in his many years of being in this position. 
he ha he has basically seen it all, and he is respected and and not faltered through any of these attacks on him or the religion. So, right, so he has not faltered one bit. His results are seen through the countless number of people helped by the religion's principles, the religion's supported campaigns, and the religion's community outreach through their members' actions. It's not shown by criminals that were expelled from the church. That's not that's not a good representation, right? Those are just people that weren't here for the right reasons and they're gone now. So they're gone. They're not they don't represent the church. Whatever they say is exactly what Render just said. The fact that none of the accusations made about him were true. There it is. It's done. Therefore, Mr. Miscavige has truly shown himself through all of the opposition's attacks, the government attacks, and even those of the countless other entities that despise the church's views and opinions on certain topics and subjects in society and how they are truly affecting the dwindling of the society and the people living on this planet. This is another quote. Start quote. Mr. Miscavige is very approachable and friendly. He gives regular briefings to Scientology parishioners and staff in our churches around the world. I estimate that he does such public briefings about 35 times a year. He stops and talks with the staff in public wherever he goes. Everywhere he goes. I have been with him on many occasions where he has stayed until the early morning hours to talk to individuals who remained after one of his briefings. It's is remarkable how many people know him and approach him as a friend. Thousands write to him to request his assistance on a wide variety of topics. And he's, he always takes the time to help or see that help is gotten. So if I read this whole entire chapter, you have another two pages left in the chapter. I won't read it all. I'm already at 12 minutes, basically. I don't want to burn out too much time in this video, but I do want to say, Definitely get the copy. Just pay the shipping. We'll send it out immediately. Um, at exposingcrimes.com. This is great information. I did a lot of research. Also, get my other books. I have two others, Escaping Leah and The Hidden Agenda. So it's Truth About Apostates, The Scientology Story, um, Escaping Leah, and The Hidden Agenda. There it is. And I'm writing more, doing a lot more research. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Um, I'll see you in Chapter 8.